Windows Windows is the most common computer system in the world, created by Microsoft Corporation. It first appeared in 1985 as Windows 1.0. Initially, it was just a visual layer sitting on top of an older system called MS-DOS, which required users to type commands. Everything looked extremely plain at first, but over time it grew into a complete operating system with major updates like Windows 95, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, and now Windows 11. Microsoft has officially stated that Windows 11 will be the last major numbered Windows version, moving to a continuous update model. What makes Windows stand out is its flexibility and the fact that it works with so many different things. Windows can run on almost any personal computer or laptop brand, and it is capable of a huge variety of tasks, from intense gaming using technologies like DirectX, to office productivity, and even programming. The Windows system also features an easy-to-use layout, making it simple for people who are just starting out. As of the third quarter of 2024, Windows held over 70% of the desktop operating system market share worldwide. However, Windows can also present problems. Its high requirements for computer power can make older or weaker equipment run very slowly. It is also well known for frequent software updates that, while intended to make things better and fix security issues, often feel like an interruption and can sometimes result in an endless Windows update cycle. Security is another worry. Because Windows is the most used system, it is also the number one target for computer viruses and harmful software, though Microsoft continuously releases patches and improvements through Windows security. And of course, there is the infamous blue screen of death, a problem that has actually been around since Windows 1.0. Mac OS Mac OS was launched in 2001 by Apple as the operating system for Mac computers, although its roots trace back to the original macOS released in 1984. Unlike Windows, which runs on various brands of personal computers, macOS is only used on Apple devices like MacBooks and iMacs. This tight supervision over both the hardware and the software make macOS incredibly reliable, smooth, and finely tuned. It is particularly favored by professionals in creative fields, including video editors, graphic designers, and musicians. This popularity is largely thanks to Apple's powerful built-in applications like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and GarageBand. One of macOS's greatest benefits is that if you already own an iPhone or iPad, macOS allows you to effortlessly sync your messages, phone calls, and files using a feature called continuity. Additionally, there are no common mandatory updates or sudden shutdowns like with Windows, and the battery life can be better as well because the operating system is specifically designed for the Mac hardware. But despite these advantages, Mac OS has a few drawbacks. Since it only functions on Apple computers, users must purchase expensive Mac equipment, which can be a major deterrent for buyers trying to stick to a budget. Another big concern is gaming, because Mac OS devices do not have DirectX support. They use Apple's own Metal API, or the powerful graphics cards often needed for modern games. However, Apple is working to improve this with Game Porting Toolkit. Furthermore, some specialized professional programs are simply not available, or if they are, they come as a limited version. Linux, unlike Windows or Mac OS, Linux is not a single operating system, but rather a family of systems known as a distro or distribution. The core of Linux, the kernel, was created in 1991 by Linus Torvalds, a Finnish software engineer who wanted to offer a free and open source alternative to other operating systems. Unlike Windows, which needs high system requirements, or the costly Mac OS devices, Linux is lightweight, secure, and does not require expensive hardware. This is why it can run on many older computers and in powerful servers. Because it is open source, Anyone can change it or create their own version, which explains why there are so many Linux distros. Some are designed for everyday people, such as Ubuntu and Fedora, while others are built for servers and experts, like CentOS and Debian. This adaptability made Linux widely adopted for programming, cybersecurity, and managing large servers. In fact, the websites and some of the powerful computers used by Google, Facebook, 
and even NASA's systems operate on Linux servers, making it the dominant operating system for web servers worldwide. However, Linux is not easy for beginners. Since it is very different from Windows and Mac OS, new users often struggle with its interface, especially because many Linux distros rely on typed text commands in a command line interface instead of visual menus. Another problem is software availability. Most popular applications and games are designed for Windows or Mac OS, forcing users to seek out alternatives. Projects like Wine and Proton are being developed to help users run Windows applications on Linux. That is why people usually do not use Linux unless they are somewhat of an expert. Chrome OS Chrome OS was developed by Google and first released in 2011 as a simple, internet-focused operating system. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, which needs software installed directly on a computer, Chrome OS is built to work mostly with the internet, making it perfect for users who spend most of their time browsing, streaming, and using web-based applications. It comes already installed on Chromebooks, which are inexpensive and fast laptops well-suited for schools and office work, including Google Workspace applications. Chrome OS also starts up in seconds and manages updates automatically in the background. It is also very secure because most activities are handled and stored on Google servers, rather than the device itself, which means less vulnerability to harmful software or system damage. It also provides access to the Google Play Store, allowing users to install Android apps and making it more capable than a basic web browser. The ability to run full Linux applications is also being added through the Crostini project, expanding its utility for developers. But Chrome OS has its weaknesses too. Since it relies heavily on the internet, it does not work well without an active connection. It also lacks support for many full desktop programs, like the complete versions of Adobe Photoshop or professional video editing software. These devices are also not ideal for high-end gaming unless you use a cloud gaming service like GeForce Now, which also depends on a fast internet connection. You also cannot do intense multitasking. Trying to open Photoshop while doing video editing, for instance, is practically impossible. Android Android is an open-source mobile system created by Google and is the world's most popular mobile operating system. It is used by numerous companies, including Samsung, Xiaomi, and many others. A great feature of Android is that we can change its appearance, install unique launcher apps, and customize almost every part of the system, unlike iOS, which has a restrictive interface. It also has the Google Play Store, which offers millions of applications and games, and Android allows you to find a range of budget-friendly phones as well as high-end, top-of-the-line models with powerful features. However, Android does have some disadvantages. Not all devices receive regular updates, which can lead to problems like slower performance over time and security risks on outdated devices. This is often due to the numerous hardware manufacturers involved. Another issue is bloatware, where manufacturers pre-install unnecessary applications that cannot be removed, consuming storage space. Also, while Android is powerful, it is generally less optimized than iOS because it must work across many different devices, meaning some apps can feel slow on Android but run smoother on iPhones. iOS iOS was developed by Apple and is the operating system that runs iPhones and iPads. The iPad now uses a variation called iPad OS. Unlike Android, which is open source and used by many brands, iOS is exclusively for Apple devices giving Apple total oversight of both the hardware and software. iOS devices are stable and come with long-term software support. Apple often supports devices for five to seven years, meaning even older iPhones continue to receive updates for years. The App Store also offers a highly regulated selection of applications, with many developers creating new releases for iOS first due to its higher security standards and user base that tends to spend more money. In addition, the iOS ecosystem enables Apple devices like MacBooks, iPhones, iPads, and Apple Watches to connect and work together effortlessly through features like Handoff and AirDrop. But iOS has its drawbacks. 
It is highly limiting because users cannot freely customize their home screens, install applications from outside the App Store, a process called sideloading, or easily transfer files without using Apple's ecosystem. Recent regulatory changes in some regions, such as the European Union, are forcing Apple to allow third-party app stores, which will change this restriction for users in those areas iPhones also lack expandable storage and a headphone jack on most models, and iOS devices tend to be expensive, even though Apple sometimes reuses the same basic design for multiple iPhone generations. Unix Unix is one of the oldest operating systems and the one that gave rise to many modern systems. It was first developed in the late 1960s at Bell Labs by AT&T and was designed as an operating system that could handle many users and run many tasks at once, mainly for servers and high-level computing. Unlike the popular modern systems, Unix is rarely used by everyday people. It is typically used to manage large workloads for big corporate servers, banking systems, and scientific research. For example, the National Weather Service uses Unix-based systems to handle and process huge amounts of meteorological data, which are vital for weather forecasting. Modern certified versions of Unix are maintained by companies like IBM, AIX, and Oracle, Solaris. By the way, installing Unix is very expensive, costing $1,447 for every user for a commercial license. This means that if you have a large company with 250 users, a full Unix setup would cost more than $350,000. BSD. BSD, which stands for Berkeley Software Distribution, is a family of operating systems that came from Unix. It was developed at the University of California, Berkeley, in the 1970s. Unlike systems made for business, BSD is usually used by tech experts for servers, setting up computer networks, and specialized systems rather than consumer laptops or desktops. Examples of systems based on BSD include the operating system for the PlayStation 4 and 5, using a fork of FreeBSD, Netflix's content delivery network, and even firewalls like PFSense and OPNSense. This is because of BSD's efficient way of managing resources and its ability to handle a large amount of work. By the way, BSD has several versions, including FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD. For over 20 years, I've lived and breathed this technology. On the Verified Explainer, I put that practical experience to work, spending the extra time to properly research, verify, and simplify complex topics for you, cutting through the myths to deliver the facts. If you appreciate the effort and experience that goes into every single video, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss a verified truth. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another verified truth, so stay tuned.